Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for this short gospel message. I'm reading from the Bible, the Word of God, and I'm reading from a letter called 1 Corinthians, which was written some 2,000 years ago by a great preacher of the gospel called Paul, and sent to some Christians in the city of Corinth. And this is what he says. I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. And Paul goes on to, to mention some people who saw the Lord Jesus Christ after he was risen from the dead. So Paul is writing to some people who know the gospel already. And he's reminding them how important this gospel message is. Now, I don't know everybody to whom I'm speaking today. Uh, maybe I'm speaking to you and you say, I know the gospel. Maybe you've heard the gospel many times. Maybe you can say like me, and like some of the people that, that Paul was writing to, I know the gospel. And more than that, I don't just know it in my head. I have believed the gospel message. I have accepted that I'm a sinner. And I have trusted the Lord Jesus to be my savior. And if you can say that, that's a wonderful thing. If you've trusted the Lord Jesus and you're saved, that's wonderful. There's no greater thing in life. If you're saved, then I just invite you to enjoy the gospel message with me because I have never grown tired of hearing the gospel. I've never grown tired of preaching it. Maybe you're listening today and you will say, well, I've heard the gospel many times. I know the gospel message. There was a time when I could have told you the gospel, but... I had not actually accepted it for myself. I knew the gospel. I knew it was true. I knew that I was a sinner. I knew that Jesus Christ had died for me, but I had never asked him to be my savior. I had never asked him to forgive me for my sins. I knew the gospel, but I wasn't saved. Maybe you're listening to the gospel today and you know the gospel but you're not saved. Well, I want to tell you, there will never be a better time than today to trust in the Lord Jesus and to be saved. Last week would have been better. Yesterday would have been better, but there will never be a better time than today. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation, is what the Bible says. Maybe, maybe you're listening this afternoon. Perhaps you've never listened to the gospel message before. Well then, thank you for joining us. Thank you for taking the time to hear what God's word has to say. And thank you for listening. And I count it a tremendous privilege to be able to tell you from the word of God, the gospel message. This is the gospel message. Paul says, it is that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he was seen. Christ died. The historical event of the dying of the Lord Jesus, how he was nailed by his hands and his feet upon a cross and lifted up to die on the Judean hillside outside of Jerusalem 2,000 years ago at a place called Calvary or Golgotha, how the Lord Jesus died is, is recorded in our Bibles. In Matthew's Gospel and Mark and Luke and John's Gospels, they tell us how the Lord Jesus died, what happened, how they nailed his hands and feet, how they lifted him up to die. But the Bible tells me not just the event, not just that he died, but the Bible tells me that he died for us. We have read from the Word of God, he died for our sins. 
See, the Bible tells me this, that the wages of sin is death. The Bible says this, the soul that sins, it shall die. The Bible tells me that if I sin, I am guilty against the God that made me. I have abused the life that he gave to me in order that I could walk with him by going my own way and doing my own thing. Sin might seem a little thing, a trivial thing to you, to me, but it is a great thing. It is an offense against the God who made us and gave us life. And the Bible says the wage, the just desert, the righteous recompense for sin is death. And that was so from the very beginning. At the very beginning of my Bible, I read of the first man, the first woman, and they were told that if they sinned, they would die. And when they sinned, they died. They died spiritually. They were separated immediately from God. And ultimately, they died physically because sin brings death. But the Bible tells me of one man who lived in this world and did no sin. The Bible tells me that we have all sinned, without exception, all have sinned. But there came into this world from heaven one who did no sin. The Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, came into this world. The Bible says about him, he did no sin. The Bible says about him, he knew no sin. In him, there is no sin. There's sin in me, sin in you. But in the Lord Jesus, there's no sin. He came into this world and he lived the perfect life. And you can read in Matthew and Mark and Luke and John's gospel, some of the things that the Lord Jesus did. He lived a perfect life, a holy life. But the Bible says he died. He died for us. The Bible says this about the Lord Jesus. He died for the ungodly, for those who are not like God, for those who are not pleasing to God, for those who have broken God's rules and have broken the law that God has given for us. The Bible says this, that Christ died for the ungodly, and it says this, that even when we were sinners, God commends his love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible says this again, that this is the love of Christ, the love of the Lord Jesus. The love of Christ is such that he, one, died for all. And I want to tell you, I can't see you, I don't need to see you to tell you this, that you're a sinner. And I don't need to see you and know who you are to tell you this. God loves you. The Lord Jesus has died so that you can be saved. Christ died for all. Christ died for us. He died for our sins. And he was buried. For on that cross, the Lord Jesus died. He gave up his own life. He commended his spirit to his father. And on that cross, the Lord Jesus died. And kind hands took him down from the cross. They buried him in the tomb. And they laid him there. And they left, left him. The stone was set across the door. And it was sealed. And it was guarded. For the Lord Jesus had died. For us. On the cross. For our sins. Christ died. And in the grave he lay three days. And on the third day, he rose. On the third day, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, rose from the dead. Death could not hold him. The stone across the tomb could not hold him. Not the guard that Pilate had set, nor the seal. It could not hold him. He rose from the dead. How did he rise from the dead? He, he was carrying my sin. He was carrying your sin, our guilt, our punishment, the judgment of God against sin. He bore 
our sins in his own body on the tree, the Bible says. How could he rise from the dead if he was carrying the sin of all the world? The Bible tells me that when the Lord Jesus rose from the dead, he was vindicated. You see, those who demanded that he should die said he made himself the son of God. He ought to die. The Bible says that God vindicated him. He declared, he powerfully declared, Jesus is the Son of God when he raised him from the dead. But the Bible says more than that. Not only did God vindicate his son, God vindicated me and you. If we will trust in the Lord Jesus, he bore our sins. And the wages of sin is death. And he died for us, our death. And when he rose from the dead, God showed he was satisfied. The work of the Lord Jesus is enough. My sins have been dealt with. My judgment has been borne. I can be saved. I can be forgiven. I can have life. Who deserved death because another has borne my sin and taken the death that was due to me he died he was buried he died for me and he rose again he rose again so i can be saved and he did rise and he was seen he was seen by peter he was seen by thomas he was seen by Mary Magdalene. He was seen by other women who had come to the tomb. He was seen, if we read on a few more verses, he was seen on one occasion by more than 500 people. And at the time that Paul wrote this letter, some of them were still alive and could say, we saw him. He was seen for he was alive. And he is alive. And he's in heaven today. I haven't seen him. But one day I shall. You have not seen the Lord Jesus. But if you would come before him and confess that you are a sinner, you know it, and God knows it, and God's word says it. If you'd confess that you're a sinner, turn away from that sin. Turn to the Lord Jesus. Trust him. He died for you. And if you will turn to him admitting your sin and turning to him trust him to be your savior ask him to be your savior ask him to take away your sin ask him to give to you eternal life ask him to give to you a home in heaven the day that you come to the lord jesus and admit your sin and turn from it and ask him in faith to save you he will save you he will keep you and one day you will see him and be with him this is the gospel message from the word of god christ died for our sins he was buried and he rose again the third day and he was seen god bless you and thank you for listening to the short message of the gospel God willing, next week, uh, at the same time, on the same channel, the gospel will be preached again, and all who can join would be most welcome. But don't leave to next week to trust in the Lord Jesus and to be saved. Thank you.